This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and what you see is a lovely handcrafted Crosley AM FM radio CD player, cassette player, and record player all built together. I picked this up at the flea market for a bargain basement price, and it had this note on top of it. Record player, CD player does not work. Uh, imagine that, a Crosley that doesn't work. Here's the sticker that was on it. Radio box player. $15 marked down to $9. That's probably about $8.50 more than it's worth, but I figured I could have a little fun with it. And here's the little caution thing telling you that the the, the, you know, the lid could come down and hit you if you don't latch it properly. Here's the information on the bottom. It's a model CR-74, manufactured January 2005. Didn't know any of these lasted that long. It's probably been in storage for since February of 2005. And you'll want to take note of that right there. That's what everybody loves to see now. Okay, let's analyze it and see what happens. Power on. Maybe that ain't power on. Maybe this is the power button. Liquor provides their customers with the best selection of wines. Well, the radio works. As you can tell, the volume control is very scratchy. Located at 12,060 Pecan Avenue in Philadelphia. 59 seconds of hope. Well, children, that FM works about as good as anything else. Let's check about let's check AM. Worldwide. I can get you by now. 20, 27, 32. Visit our... Well, radio works about as good as any other modern day piece of junk. Alright, let's try this. Let's see what's next. And I'll add these controls are so cheap in these that they usually are not very old before they start developing static. Alright, let's try the CD. Well, you could open. Yeah, that does say open and close on that button, doesn't it? Well, it won't even open. It sounds like I'm hearing the loading motor turn, but nothing else is happening. Alright, let's try the cassette. And this uses one of those side-mounted cassette players. It's been in use since the 80s. I think a lot of cheap car stereos use this same tape player. Let's hope it doesn't ruin my tape. Ooh, somebody just shot something. Well, I don't think the cassette's doing anything either. I'm not hearing any any motor activity. I remember back in... For Christmas 1989, my father gave me a Thomas Cathedral AM FM radio, and it had this exact same cassette mechanism mounted in the side of it, and it's not doing anything. Totally inoperative. Let me fiddle with this switch here. And nope. So the cassette's dead. No surprise there. Okay, let's try the record player. And to start this one, you move the tone arm back to the right until it clicks, and you can hear we're making a, a loud motor grinding sound, which means the motor in this thing is on its way out. That's really no surprise either, because the 
motors are very cheap in these things. Uh, the mechanism is really based on what a lot of cheap 80s and early 90s all-in-one stereos had in them. But I don't ever recall seeing a bad motor in one of those. They, they just cheaped out on the design for these newer ones. But I've seen lots of motors bad in these things. You can see we have almost no torque there. Alright. Christmas Eve is coming soon. Well, it's playing, but the volume's turned wide open. Whisper what you bring. As you can see, this lovely piece doesn't really work all that great. Here we are with the bottom cover removed. You can see all of the lovely blue Chinese no-name capacitors. And to look at the sides, you'd think it was a four-speaker setup by the presence of speaker grills on the front and side. Well, that's not the case, as you can see. We have at best uh, maybe a three, three-inch by five-inch speaker on each side and there's our cheap cassette mechanism there's our CD player and I can see a disc hanging out the back of it which means it disc got stuck in here by the previous owner and since you can't remove the back cover it seems like the only way you can get this out is to remove this escutcheon but look what happens when you try to remove these screws they just they just break off on you now they're a little bit corroded, so they can't take that kind of abuse. Okay, let's see, what do we have here? Unforgettable with Love by Natalie Cole. I was expecting it to be some hip-hop disc, uh, something by 50 Cent or something like that. Now that we got it open, let's see what happens. Now I hear it spinning. and it appears to not be recognizing the disc. No surprise there, it probably means the laser shot. And when I press the play button, absolutely nothing happens. Let's see if it'll spit the disc out. Amazing. Maybe I should take the disc back to the flea market and Tell them to give it back to the vendor. They might want their Natalie Cole CD back. Okay, I cleaned the volume pot and the selector switch and got most of the static out. You can tell the alignment's way off on here. We're tuned to 95.1. It's coming in way up higher than that. Thought we'd play some modern rap music, music on this modern Chinese piece of crap. The type of music will match the type of unit this is, both crap. Okay, now that we've had a look at the Chinese piece of crap, Here's the real deal from the 1940s. This is a Mech, otherwise known as John Mech Industries. They were a small firm that I think went out of business probably in the early 50s. And this was a cheap, bottom of the line, low end, 78 RPM record player and AM radio from about oh, 1946 or 47. And I've overhauled it. These older ones you could do that to. The only way to overhaul a Crosley is to pitch it in the garbage dump. That would just have matched the hair in Grandma's wig. I warned all my friends and neighbors. Better watch out for yourself. They should not. <laughs> 
And no, I don't have the volume cranked wide open like I had to do on the Crosley. You know who, all around the Christmas tree, and my slippers. But yeah, granted, this is only AM and 78 RPM, because that's all they had back then. Well, they had FM, but it wasn't very common. But yeah, what I'm saying is, this vintage stuff, most of the time, is built a heck of a lot better than this newer crap. And it's designed to be serviced. Now, that's not to say that there's a... You know, there's not decent modern equipment made. There is decent modern record playback equipment being made, but you're not going to get it for $150 at Walmart or, or excuse me, China Mart or Worst Buy. And you're not going to, it's not going to be something with a built-in amp and speakers. If you want a decent new turntable, then you better be prepared to fork out several hundred bucks for a turntable and another several hundred for a decent receiver and speakers. Or you can go to the vintage route, go to your local thrift store, flea market, yard sale, or whatever, and pick up a used Technics or Pioneer turntable from the 70s or 80s for 25 bucks and find you a receiver for about the same price and some speakers for 15 or 20 bucks and do a little maintenance on it and you'll be good to go. All right, I know this wasn't quite as exciting as some of my other anti-Crosley videos, but I've had requests to do some, so I thought I'd do one real quickly. Now I need to come up with a creative way to EOL the thing. I've actually got three Crosleys sitting here. Maybe I should come up with a way to do a mass EOL on all three of them. All right, with all of that said, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy whatever, whatever you happen to be doing during this time of year, and more to come later.